The Hilltop Glove Podcast is sponsored by Mid-Carolina Service Company. Mid-Carolina Service Company is the first name to search for your residential or commercial HVAC needs in Lexington and surrounding areas. Just go holla at Jason and Clint. They'll hook you up on the air conditioners, on the restaurant equipment, refrigerators, refrigeration, ice machine repair. They've been doing this for years. I've known them cats forever. Family owned and operated since 2006, they pride themselves in their quality work and customer relationships. Call 803-356-4153 or visit midcarolinaserviceco.com for no obligation quote for service today. The Hilltop Club Podcast is sponsored by True Brilliance Entertainment. True Brilliance is a production, promotions, and management company dedicated to connecting artists and producers across the Carolinas to music industry professionals. Several of their clients have placements both domestic and internationally as a result of their services. Are you an artist or producer looking to build meaningful relationships within the music industry? Then True Brilliance is for you. Check them out at paramilitary.com. That's spelled P-A-I-R-A military.com. This episode of the Hilltop Glove podcast is sponsored by Bob's. Bob's is a Columbia-based retailer of over 100 Black-owned products from 20 Black-owned businesses. Bob's offers a wide range of items from household cleaning, cosmetics, and everything in between. With every visit to Bob's, you support Black-owned businesses, giving them the opportunity to grow and establish connections with our community. Bob's is located inside the Noma Warehouse at 2222. Sumter Street in Columbia, South Carolina. Visit their website, weshopbops.com for in-store pickup or to find out more. Bops can also be found via social media on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at We Shop Bops. When you stop by, tell them the Hilltop Glove sent you. Bops brings quality Black brands to the Columbia community. Hilltop Glove Podcast is sponsored by Red Rooster Sports Bar and Grill. Red Rooster is your neighborhood bar and grill serving the best wings, burgers, and baskets in the Met. Like the amazing food, the bar is always on tap, and there's plenty of screens to watch the big game. Red Rooster is the Midlands' premier meetup spot for local car and bike clubs, fraternities, and sororities. Staff is dedicated to accommodating all kinds of parties and events. If you're looking to catch a game, have a bite, and a drink, look no further than the Red Rooster. Red Rooster is located at 7500 Wilson Boulevard, Columbia, South Carolina. For more information, visit RedRoosterSportsBar.com or visit them on Facebook, Instagram at Red Rooster Sports Bar. Go where the winners go. Welcome to the Hilltop Glove Podcast. 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 Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Hilltop Glove Podcast. Today, we have the pleasure of interviewing Miss Monifa Lemons. Monifa is the owner of Haiku Coffee, a Black-owned coffee roasting company in Columbia, South Carolina. The company does not only offer regular coffee, but she sources her coffee directly from Africa. Is that true? That is true. Okay. Before launching Haiku Coffee, Monifa was a poetry organization director for eight years. She is also a poet and spoken word artist herself for more than 20 years. After each open mic event, Monifa and her late husband would invite people over for late night coffee Monifa says she loves the way coffee smells, as you can hear it in the background brewing, (laughs) and she loves to taste new blends. She became obsessed with learning about it, and that's when she launched Haiku Coffee 575 in November 2020 with her four daughters. The name of the business was derived from from Haiku, a form of poetry that consists of 17 syllables. It has five in the first line, seven in the second, and then five on the last. Monifa decide, decided to use the name to symbolize that with haiku, there is no room for haiku. Well, there's no room for any mess up, like any missing words. Like with, with haiku, there's no room for 
playing around with words. You can't. You might. You must. Yeah. You have to use exact. You can't waste your words with high. Okay. You can't waste your words. You got to be intentional and strategic. Got to be intentional and strategic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Since use. then, Haiku Coffee has recently started offering their products at Soda City Market downtown in Columbia, South Carolina, and has grown ever since. Haiku Coffee is looking to grow into a wholesaling at grocery at multiple grocery stores and across the country. How are you today? I'm good. I'm wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Oh, I forgot to mention, we have a special <laughs> guest judge today. Huh? Would you like your own intro? Inter- oh, no, I'm here. I'm just here basking in the glory of Miss Monday because she is amazing. <laughs> she smells fantastic. Are you talking about her or the coffee? I try to work, on, <laughs> try to work on my walk by air. My walk by air is good sometimes. It's on a 17,000. <laughs> I can't take it. <laughs> so, Monifa, we like to start off by telling our guests a little bit more about you. Mm-hmm. You know, we've been working with you for a while now, but give us a little background story about your childhood, who and, who and what influenced you, and what was it like growing up? Yeah. So, I grew up, I'm born and raised in New York City, in Queens, New York, Lennon Boulevard. I, I was, as a child, I was in theater. I'm a theater baby. I was brought up in Black Spectrum Theater Company. Pierce Ashwood, shout out. She was my director in most of the shows that I've been in when I was a child. And as I grew up, she chose to help me get into high school performing arts. So if any of these youngins around here have ever heard of anybody talking about the movie Fame, I went to that high school. I went to high school performing arts. Well, when they, they blended both schools together and put the school 65th in Amsterdam, right behind Lincoln Center. So they put both high school performing arts and high school of music and arts together. And that, that's the school I went to. I moved here when I was about, oh God, young, 20, had my baby. And Jocelyn and I would just go around the city and just do things together. I was just talking about a sister of mine that just passed away. Her name is Doretha from Doretha Books. I used to go into that bookstore when Jocelyn was little and complain about nothing happening in South Carolina. <laughs> I was like, you people are so like bereft of any artistic culture when it comes to the Black community. And she, one day, she just told me to shut up. (laughs) Told me to shut up. She said, it's not here because you haven't built it. Mm. It's not here because you haven't made it. And whatever you need to see, it's, you need to see it, so build it. And so that's when I started doing, hosting open mics here. Me and my daughter used to street team together. I started at This, That, and the Other, which was down on Harden. It's, it's, I think now it's Spectrum. I'm not sure. I think it's Spectrum now. But uh, This, That, and the Other, Live and Dance Theater. I hosted open mics by myself just because I didn't see it. I built it. And I've been doing that ever since 98. Came back to theater a little bit. Did Dream Girls and stuff like that here. A little, little, little theater here and there. And here I am today, you know, doing stuffs. As I grew, I try, I'm sorry, as I grew, I tried to do a little bit more for the poetry community. And that's when I started. But the vision came from the Watering Hole for the Watering Hole Poetry Organization. Because I came from stage. My business partner at the time came from page poetry. And so we decided to build something together and it's still going on. I'm not the director there anymore, but they are still going. And uh, yeah, making things happen for Southern poets of color. Excellent. Yeah, that's what I do. Could you, I just had to interject because I wanted to grab you when you were saying Go, this. Do you sorry. remember some of these places that you used to actually perform in? Oh some my God. But yeah. Here in Columbia, this, that, and the other, I used to have an open mic at. Malibu's, Mr. B's. I used to also, I used to be the bartender at Mr. B's. And I would jump from behind the bar, go do a poem, introduce the next poet, jump back on stage. <laughs> and I would say, tip your lovely bartender before I finish. Yeah. And the guy who ran that loved me so much, he made me the host of it. And I hosted that for years. Malibu's, if people know, radio star Venom. Venom is one of my best friends, but Venom and I used to run the streets just promoting and doing all kinds of stuff together. And she and I did the first all-female, meaning the band was female, the People on the mic were female. The singers, everything was female. At Malibu's back in the day, we did that first time here in Columbia. Done the library, <laughs> every everything. I've done every. I've done a lot of venues here. Just basically, if I talk to somebody, I'm gonna do it. If I say I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. If I think it up, I'm gonna do it. I, but I don't work with people who just saw Love Jones and want to just work. It's the first way to get broke. Oh lord. So I just I work with people that are serious about art. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. They you know, you ain't passion. serious about art, I can't fool with you. So you like that Kobe, should be on like the shirt, Kobe Kobe John. Yeah. Serious <laughs> about art, I can't fool with you. <laughs> Please get that, yeah. get that t-shirt, John. Yeah. Yeah. Done. John, and we'll yeah. have it done this week. Press and print. <laughs> Press and print. <laughs> so are you an yeah. only child or you have I'm siblings? I'm a middle baby. I was my mom's problem yeah, I'm child. I'm technically a middle baby, but I'm the oldest of the last baby. They started all over. It's complicated. Oh, <laughs> 
teach no. it. Oh, it's complicated. It's complicated. <laughs> my oldest is 32. Mm. My twins are 17. Mm. My baby's 50. So because my 17-year-old twins, one was born three minutes early, right. she calls herself her, the oldest. I'm <laughs> oldest around here. I was born three minutes before Ollie. Huh? <laughs> and, 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 and the other Old one does. Too. What's weird is the, the one that came out second, she acts like a middle child. Yeah, she Aww. really does. I think it's I think it's a mental That's thing. Real, yeah. But that I was my sense. mom's problem when I left New York. I had done all of New York. Seriously? Oh yeah, I was horrible. I went to Cosby Show auditions by myself, with no 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 <laughs> agent, no nothing. I took a picture of myself and brought my own picture to the audition, and I read from myself. They were like, "Where are your parents? I hear. What are you talking about? Am I getting a role or not?" What's going on? <laughs> hey, you about your business? She's yeah, from was, New York. Yeah, she's I know. She's like, yeah, they horrible. about it. They so about when, it. When yeah. did you when did you have that? When you realize you had that drive that I'm going to jump in the pool mm -hmm. spirit that you have about I'm going to go get it no matter what. When did you realize that you had that? and why is that so important in being creative to have that jump in the jump in the pool first in the snow mm -hmm. spirit? I've had it my whole life. Like I've always I think since I was a teen, if you let a child from Queens go to take two hours to get to school one bus and three trains to get to school. You see so much in the mm -hmm. city that you want to do everything. So I was always a person that just wanted to do everything. But you, you know, I was blessed to go to school with people like, you know, Mark Pitts works with Diddy. He's Diddy's right hand man forever. But Mark Pitts went to school with me. A lot of people went to school with me. Cher's daughter, Chaz. And people went to school with me that just did whatever they wanted to do. And so you get to see it, you know, yeah. when you see no, it, real. you're like, okay, I could do this. Now, and I think that it's totally necessary to have that drive in you because fear, you know, fear don't play. Yeah. It really does. And don't. so you have to really have more drive than fear in order to get things done, you know. So not that fear doesn't pop up, but I really don't care about trying. I just try. Mm -hmm. what it is. Mm -hmm. How have you accomplished so much in Colombia? Like who's helped you over the years? Or who have you partnered with? Mm, shout out to Miss Aretha. She just passed last Saturday. Miss Aretha from Doretha Bookstore. You go to, oh God, Peace. The Peace of Soul. Peace of Soul on, on North Main. North Main. Falami. It's a very good friend of mine. And her brothers used to give me space. Shout out to T-Rock, Carl Solomon Law Firm. Yeah, I know T-Rock. Yeah. 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 T-Rock was the one that he hired He is so me. cool. Yeah, T-Rock yeah. used to get tired of me jumping off the, jumping out of the, out of the, out of the, he a Virgo. <laughs> out of the bar to the booth. And he's yeah. like, oh, why don't you just host the night? I'll pay you. Uh, T-Rock oh. gave me my, gave me my, after I did my own open mics, T-Rock is the first person to hire me as a host. Cool. Let me say that. Sean Boyles, Carl Solomon, Solomon Law Group. Ed Madden, the former poet laureate of Columbia, has given me so many opportunities to do and be who I want to be. Nikki Finney, National Book Award winner, 2014. Mm -hmm. She's one of my mentors. And Jasper Arts, Columbia Museum of Art. Oh. One Columbia. Yeah, One Columbia. Mm. One they, Columbia they has been really a lot for me. Artists. Mm -hmm. I have to shout, out, shout them out because they're beautiful. And I'm um, Soda City now, you know. Soda City, they didn't, they didn't know what they were doing when they let me let me loose at Soda City. <laughs> Poor thing. Poor things. But go ahead. So Poor things. The rats can't stop me. <laughs> no, they can't. They started, started out just selling bags of coffee. Now is the truth. Yeah. Now, this next question for you, it has a word in it, which is really interesting. Asthet. Asthet. Yeah, I didn't know what it was Asthet. until I, yeah, I, was, so I, I Googled it. it. See, you know, yeah, go is defined as a person who has a love for the art, but also appreciates the beauty of poetry. That was my first time hearing that mm, word. That is wild. So yeah. what is the most important aspect of poetry to you? Oh, man. The words? Is it the feel? Is it? You know? Being honest, the poetry is 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 very serious to poets that love the honesty of poetry. We, you know, Jock Jock can attest to this. I know you can sit in an open mic and you know who lied. Yes. Mm, really? Facts. You feel it? Yeah. Yes. You know who lied. Yes. You're not a poet. You might not catch it. You think that somebody's saying something really, really profound. But I could sit in a room. And an open mic, and somebody get on the mic, and I'd be like, man, they really needed some attention. Mm -hmm. And that'd be it. Mm -hmm. They just needed Got attention. It. It. And it rose me the wrong way when I when I hear it, when it's not coming from a a real place. You know, I can, I, you you can manufacture feelings, and I, you can write about certain things, but when you try to make it yours, but you didn't go through it, you can feel that just like, uh, oh, I can and feel it's it. disgusting. It's, it's icky. So it's disrespectful. Icky. It's so disrespectful. Yes. Well, as a poet, you got to be vulnerable all the time. You got to be vulnerable all the time. 
No. So there are poet, my hands down, my favorite poet is Patricia Smith. Look her up. She, she won so many times at, I think, Independent Poetry Slam or, or Wild Whips. She won so many times they asked her to not come back. Whoa. Wow. Okay. This is a na- this is a world national poetry competition. They asked, she won so many times they asked her to not come back. Please, please stop coming. We got to stop giving this award to you. Mm. Then she decided to become um, like a page poet. Now there's 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 a there's an invisible line between stage and page poets. They say that it's not there, but it is there. And she decided to start writing books. You know, she wrote a whole book on every single poem is about the death of somebody who got killed by police, black mm. black children that got killed by police. Right? Mm-hmm. Did she experience that? No. no. Her only child is a dog. Mm-hmm. She has a dog as a child. Mm. But do but she went in and found every single nook and cranny of everything that she needed to in order to write the book. Mm-hmm. If you do not do your work, poetry is about doing your homework, man. Whether it's your stuff and getting down to the bottom of your stuff, or it's whether it's getting down to the bottom of the subject that you want to talk about, if you don't do that, real poets will tell you you didn't do it. Mm-hmm. One of my, another person that put me on, Kwame Dawes, how I started here with the watering hole was because there's a place called Kaveh Kanem in Brooklyn. And it's like this mecca of black poets. And somebody told me to go find Kwame Dawes and ask him if he'll bring it down here. And I went and found him and I said, I don't, I don't know what Kaveh Kanem is. And I don't know what these words are y'all using, like haiku and all. I don't know what these things are. I'm a, stay, I'm, I'm a spoken word artist. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'll bring it down here if you get the people. Mm-hmm. So I filled a room with 30 poets and he brought down this thing called Kaveh Kanem South. And we did it for two years. Kaveh Kanem let us come down here and do Kaveh Kanem South. So Kwame Dawes said to me one day, he said, read me a poem and I'll tell you the last time you read a book. Mm. Wow. And he meant that. Mm. Wow. It totally intimidated me. And I'm saying to myself, I'm still, still doing these pieces that I wrote five years ago. They still rocking because poem is new everywhere you go. Mm-hmm. You the same right. poem for 10 years. Nobody, one person in the room didn't hear it, right? Yeah. We're like comedians. We move around and just do the same Got jokes you. over right. and over again. And people didn't hear it, right? But Kwame Dawes says, read me your last poem. I'll tell you the last po- poet you read. I'll tell you who you read. He also said, it's okay to copy what somebody's doing because that's the only way to learn how to do it yourself. But then you have to actually study and show yourself approved when you when you read the, when you write the poem. Make it your own. You got to make it your own. Yeah. That's the same thing my teacher said about art. So that's so crazy mm-hmm. that it all yeah. goes hand in hand. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's all right for you, mm-hmm. to, for you to copy this person's kind of aesthetic, right? Yeah, yeah. Because it's the only way you're going to come through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You'll come through. We don't like to listen to other people's music when we're vocalists and, sing, and singing and True. I'm sure doing beats. You don't like to listen to other, other people's beats. You don't want none of their stuff on your stuff. Right, right. But how? But if you, if you real about your stuff, you can hear everybody's stuff. Mm-hmm. It's still going to come out just as yours. Yeah, yeah. you just have to learn. It, it helps you learn the things that you like, the things that you don't like, and how to mm-hmm. achieve those certain frequencies that you, if you just sit in your room, I've never heard someone play in B flat major before. I need to hear somebody playing B flat major that's dope and like, oh, Good point. I can do that too. You know? Do you know I did not know that drums can be played in court and in, 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 in notes? Yes. Until I, I sat and I sat through a whole like 30 minutes of quest mm-hmm. of um of quest love playing. Yep. And my sister was like, he's playing in D major. I'm like, what did you yep. how do you do that? Yeah, you, you can tune your drum. But I did not know. You don't realize that too. A lot of like really intensive producers will mm-hmm. tune drum kits to whatever the song, the frequency that are playing. Wait, and normal people that. don't get it, but musicians will hear. Mm-hmm. I can't I'm I know? gotta play I gotta play with you on this because it's funny that you say yeah. that. Watch this is gonna make so much sense. So uh-huh. drums are percussion, right? Yeah. Xylophone and piano, both percussions. You play chords and yeah. Yep. It messes with you when you think about yeah. it. Yeah. 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 But that makes me think about frequency when mm-hmm. Janae put those the oh. different frequencies in her songs. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. That's there he is. Mm-hmm. But it goes with the poetry too. Mm-hmm. So you have to understand the frequency of the poem that you're delivering. Oh, so, come on now. It, yes. goes come on now. it goes into the understanding, like you said, That's real. where he was saying, if you I can tell when you read the last book, I can tell if you're tapped in to who you oh. are and as a person, your own frequency yeah. when you're writing your poetry. Because you hear so many poems, well, poets, especially when they're performing live, that they're trying to sound like somebody else. Yeah. But found their own voice. Right. You can yeah. sound similar to somebody because certain people voices are, there are only so many variations of a voice, yeah, right? You know. But the way you say it, how you say it, is your own frequency 
And you can tell when po- po- poets are not being mm-hmm. not only their voice, but their words and mm-hmm. the, putting the words together and they have their own vision. And, yeah. you know, from your stuff, you're very unique in that. You're able to catch that. Yeah. that people t- and you like to teach people. Yeah. Hey, look, I hear that, but you can do it this way because yeah. this is more you. So how did you find your voice yeah. in poetry? Uh, the first poems I read on stage belong to Prince. Okay. I ain't gonna lie. The first poem, I'm nothing without your touch, my love. I'm nothing without your kiss. To spend each night in your arm, my flower, is a man's idea of bliss. To something in your arms, something in a bath. If I was anything in this world, I want to be the we'll water be in, in your, your bath. bath. Oh, yep. Is you nice. <laughs> I didn't co-sign that. What was that one from? <laughs> Under the Cherry Moon. Under the Cherry Moon, yeah. Do you know your most significant poem? Yeah, I'm Hip Hop. I'm Hip Hop? I Am Hip Hop is my most significant poem. It is a poem that I Am Hip Hop, and there's another poem that I do called Bitches and Hoes. Both of them oh, I wrote. I wrote <laughs> both of them I wrote in about 15 minutes each, but then I, I've had to, I had to edit them, but there's nothing that hit my head harder. I was so mad at hip hop. That night, I was, I was just I was just mad at hip hop. I was tired. I was I'm very, you know. My friends say I start fights about hip hop. I do. I don't care. <laughs> I'll fight anybody about hip hop. I do because I'm real serious about it. It's it's like it's part of you know it's my life. It's how I grew up, and I don't like anybody playing with that. Mm-hmm. And also, we had to fight so hard to get hip hop noticed and and respected mm-hmm. in the world. That now, you know, that it was being taken for granted, in my opinion. You don't understand how long it took for us to get in front of a camera. I know you're not playing. Right. <laughs> like, what, now that we're in front of a camera, y'all gonna play? Mm-hmm. That's how I felt. And uh, so when I wrote I Am Hip Hop, it was just really like just me being so frustrated with people. And uh, Bitches and Hoes was me in another room. My daughter, my oldest daughter. When she was a teen, she had some friends over and they kept saying, bitch, uh, bitch, uh, bitch. <laughs> and I was driving a car and writing the poem on the steering wheel on a <laughs> tissue on one, on I-126, getting on the highway, like, tell me about something. Yeah, and I wrote that poem in like 15 minutes on napkins. I couldn't stop writing because that's really like serious about how we wrote, you know, and do I use the word? Yeah, I use the word because I think it's, Hilariously funny when I'm using it with my friends, but I have to watch myself though because it really does not. It gets thrown around so much. Mm-hmm. And uh, your generation, I I think I give you honor. I give honor to your generation because your generation were the first ones to say, you know, y'all not gonna be sex shaming us. Like you're not gonna be, y'all gonna call me a hoe. Okay, I'm a hoe now. What? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it has grown. The poem had, it, it, you know, it's kind of been left behind because now. It's not so harsh to call somebody a hoe. Mm-hmm. They, they take the word and flip it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But at that time, I just wanted people to respect it. And how do you guys feel about that? People and the significance of a word. Oh, I got, yeah. I really, yo, yeah. With, mm-hmm. Especially with words. In the, yeah. yeah, because especially even, got to bring this one and said that. We got to bring in the, the infamous N word. But yeah, the N word. That was put to rest by the end of Lacey. So, Get yeah. Jai going on that one. Uh, how do you how do you feel to, about that? I got that. to respect the Jai on that word. Oh, uh, that's tight because I don't run into it as much as you do. Yeah, yeah, I run into it a lot. Yeah, yeah. For me, and it, I don't see anything wrong with it. I think it's contextual. Mm-hmm. It's where the places come. Me myself personally, I rarely say it. Yeah. And then when I'm DJing, I try not to in mixed company. Mm-hmm. In, in, in in mixed company. I try not to use songs with large amounts of the in bomb in at all, right? Mm-hmm. But do I know it exists? Yeah. Are there songs that I'm going to play depending on the crowd that, you know, like down for my... Yeah. Ah. yeah. It, it, now, yeah. If, if I'm if I'm here in the South and I'm playing a yeah. down South, I'm playing that. That's what it's called. <laughs> <down. laughs> I'm playing yes. that. It's, yeah. it's made for that. Yes. You know, but... If I'm at an art gallery, I'm not going to be playing. Let me drop another. You know, <laughs> yeah, the Columbia <laughs> music. You know, and then and the, that's too funny. The, the bitches and hoes thing. You yeah. know, it's like also contextual. If I have, I have ladies that I know that are friends. They call it. They call. I can't say nothing about me that. Me and my best thing we do. We I can't say nothing about it's that. Not a, it's not a thing that we don't say. I don't do it. I don't do it. Yeah. But there are some songs that, like I said, 
depending on where I'm playing and the crowd that I'm playing for. I may not play those, but there are certain ones where I know that it's the right environment. Everybody knows these songs already anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give them what they want. So I, I, I try not to hold a high moral clause on people on what they like. Mm -hmm. But if it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, then I will police what they can and can't say to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I'll accept for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, you can't say that to me. Or around me. I don't me. care. Or around me. Yeah. You may do it with your friends, but not around me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. With my, the, the way that I performed that poem, the Bitches and Hoes poem, I started out with, I'm singing sometimes, I feel like a motherless child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. because you can say the word all you want to, call my mama a bitch and see what happens. That's right. So, yeah. That's why I started out, start that poem out like that, because mm -hmm. it's like, I need you to just think about it. It's not, you don't got to stop calling somebody that. I just need you to think about it for a second. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the hip hop piece that I do is, is, is really, just speaking to the fact that you don't just respect where it, where it came from, man. And, and, and don't, my daughter sends me this, the TikTok with this, oh Lord, this boy, if I ever see him in the street, I'm going to smack him. <laughs> Not hard, just in the back of his head. But I, I am, I'm going to hit him in a minute. I feel sorry, but I'm going to hit him. He says, uh, he does the, he makes fun of he, yeah, he yeah. makes fun of that kind of that kind of hip hop. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know, that's not my generation. I'm the generation after that. Right. But had it not been for, then I wouldn't be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. You know, had it not been for, you know, Modi and all of them, it would not there would not be a rock him. No. Mm -hmm. So don't don't mm -hmm. do that. No, no. Everything you know. builds on you know each other. And so I send her videos back where I sent her one. Did you see the new video where Big Daddy Kane is rapping over a trap beat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have. Oh, he still got it. Sickening. He still got it's it. It's sickening. He still got it. And I was like, there, now. Yeah. What y'all doing now? Yeah. <laughs> Here's the crazy thing. Here's the crazy thing. Here's what I tell uh -huh. people when it comes to, like, production or poetry and things like that. When people look at the, the generation before them, the mm -hmm. people that came before them, I tell them all the time, say, look, I can do what you can. Mm -hmm. But can you do but what you I can. do? Right. And what is that? Put that called? on the shirt too. What is that? <laughs> I think if we could, I like, can make sure beats all day. Yeah. What do we <laughs> right. call that? Like the ability, like they have an inability to be able to adapt to yeah. the former way of life, but they're pushing something new that everybody is now um, implementing or assimilating yeah. to. So because of that, they are the fresh, new, hot ish that's yeah. out. But they got zero actual skills. Yeah, I was. We were, all right, so we, my, my brother Kevin, and I, we had this conversation. Uh huh. It was an ongoing conversation about what we call it. You have style with no substance. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you have substance without mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. And we always tease that we're, there's this like ongoing war or battle between the good and the bad, the, the quote unquote the binary, the off and the on. Mm -hmm. and one thing we realize about the bad, mm -hmm. they got all the style. They do. They style be dripping. They just sauce. It's sauce. saucy. Just but saucy. those people with substance, our stuff be whack. Yeah. It be long. I the see what colors you're don't be blending well. We don't just do great <laughs> marketing. <laughs> stuff is janky. But the substance is there. And but we the shit. Yeah, we're the ish. Low like key. If you, go into the you, find, know, you see J. Cole just drop out of this nowhere. Or no, right. Right. J. Cole just, he woke up one morning, put and a hoodie boom. on, there. and just drop out. He say something. Hey. To all aspects of the arts is that we have turn this into a very capitalist, mm. monetary-based art system. Mm -hmm. So we look for... This portion of the podcast is brought to you by Lynx Recording Studio. Lynx is a premier audio and video recording studio in the greater Charleston area with four completely different booths, multiple peripherals, and four producers. They have the ability to service all facets of audio and video creativity. If you need to record a song, a podcast, create a demo, or even take headshots and complete drops for Hollywood film, they've done it. Call them at 843-879-9386 or find them online at linksrecordingstudios.com. That's lynx, L-Y-N-X, recordingstudios.com. The lowest common denominator, so it's not necessarily that the substance doesn't have drip is that the style gets more push and gets more money put into it. Because if tomorrow, I tell people this all the time, if I can find a guitar, a guitar playing crocodile, I, and they can pack in 150 
a uh, 150 room <laughs> bar and they sell out, I can book them anywhere in the city. 100%. It's a crocodile. The place is ukulele. You true. You know what I'm saying? It's true. So what they found out is that this, if you if you have these low level, low vibrational things that people can attach themselves to, and they say, well, I can do that too. And it makes it more attached to it. Because when we were coming up, whether it was poetry, art, music, mm -hmm. we looked up to our heroes as, man, I'll never be able to do that. Now this is a, oh, I can do that. Oh, right, right, right. I can do I that can do too. That. I can do that too, right. But then here's the right. issue. You ready? Here's the problem. Uh -huh. I'm, trying, I'm trying to get over this hill to understand this. Mm -hmm. Well, we're talking about things that are like standard barriers, right? So mm -hmm. we have to like live to a standard, right? These kids are saying, yeah, I could do that, I could do that. And then they don't do it. Instead, what they do is they give you a beautiful facade. The candy looks great. When you bite into the candy, it's rotten. It's rotten. And that's what's hurting There's you. There's no because, follow through. Yeah, like, I'm going to tell you, like, with my man out here who's doing Mr. John Morant, what's going on with him right now? The gritty is amazing. I love watching this style. The way he plays and performs, magnificent. Magnificent. But when you get into his substance, you're like, I'm not hanging well, around. I'm not hanging around. But with, I'm yeah, not around. because people don't understand that our generation came from, yo, Dennis Rodman can hang with anybody. Yeah, anybody. With a yeah. dress on in Pearl. Exactly. exactly. And That's he can step into any club. Yes. You gonna That's you gonna turn you gonna turn you gonna turn Dennis Robin around in the club? Nope. Because nope. he's dressed in a dress. Nope. No, no, nope. you're not. You know why? Because tomorrow he's gonna pull back up with some jeans and the sneak sneakers yep. on, mm -hmm. and he's still gonna be Dennis Robin. He yep. has that substance. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know exactly. what I'm saying? I was thinking about that when late, lately they've been showing. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a content creation hog, hog. The videos of when people used to go on the time join the morning show. Yes. And sing. Yes. And you had to go, and they would turn the studio on, and they show Fantasia singing and yeah, yeah. Chris Brown and uh -huh. people yeah. singing their first songs. Where you were like, "Oh my God, that was the first time so and so was on was live." Yeah. You couldn't. And and what did Tom, what did what did Tom Jordan do? He gave his show to Ricky Smiley. Ricky Smiley could never, nah. could never nah. have a live studio and invite anybody in. Did you see Jeremiah sing <laughs> without his? <laughs> yeah, without the auto <laughs> machines. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's scary. Bad. It's yeah. scary. And so there's no substance on the inside, but that comes from also, I think, being cool enough to have what what was the, I forget who the who the female singer is. Two million followers, but nobody bought our album. Oh yeah, I know. I know exactly you're talking about. But nobody bought our nobody album. Nobody nobody Good bought point. it. Two million followers and nobody bought our because album. Because they well, she had a bunch of fake followers. This is what I'm about to get to again. Tell me about the robots. Yeah, the robots. <laughs> they grew like these, like they're in an era where you can create mm -hmm. fake attention. Mm -hmm. Attention is the currency. Attention is the currency now, not even money. Yeah, not attention even money. is currency. You it can is. create fake attention. That fake attention brings you money and actual mm -hmm. physical items. So then people see this stuff and they expect or think that, hey, these people must be successful. They must be good at it. Doing why? Because he has a Rolex on and he does poetry. Mm. So he must be doing something amazing with his poetry because they, they got a Rolex and that's money. And that person over there, their poetry, it may feel better. And I, when I hear it, I know it's real. But they got beads on and they're wooden. I can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a lot. But it's, it's so true. You got to just it. You, you have to find the, the, the middle ground between art and commerce sometimes and mm -hmm. the business and art because to to be someone so as much as you want to be mm -hmm. a functioning 100 mm -hmm. creative yeah. you have to figure out a way to sustain it to where you're able you're to right. do it you're right you know i've had one i had one post that i had on instagram i don't i think it did i did it did about seven hundred fifty thousand views Ooh. wow yeah the next week no views because I didn't know I was going to get 750,000 views off what I did. Oh my I didn't Lord. know. I didn't know. And so now I'm like, you know, oh, well, how do I? And I went on YouTube and they said, you got to keep doing that. And I'm like, keep doing what? Right. I, don't know why I, did the I don't know what I did. I just, I just was posting. You'd have to read so all the comments to I figure was, out what it was. What was it? Yeah. You know, that got me all these, all these views. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it got me a lot of followers, but not a lot, a lot. Still only down three thousand followers, but it was just, I'm still I, I'm still hurt about it. But I'm hurt about it. You can click like, but you can't follow. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but it does take you through that that space of not having any substance to follow it up or have anything to 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 back it up. I really I get amazed at people that 
want to have, oh, uh, uh, club owners that come up to me and go, you know, I want to have an open mic at my club. <laughs> first thing I tell them is, we'll be broke for six months. You good? Yeah. That's you my first statement. Yeah. Yes. We're broke for six, six months. months. You still want to do it? Yeah. And it's always, well, let, let me give you a call. Yeah, give me a call. I'm, I'm willing to tell you right now, we're going to make nothing. We won't make money until about eight months in. You still want to do it? Because I need your prime night. I need mm-hmm. you to help me promote it. Mm-hmm. I need the ads. I need all your money going towards this poetry night. And that's why you see these open mics going, yeah, we moved over to... We moved over to... Uh, yeah. We did not have an honest conversation with the right. owner in the first place. And that's your name that looks like it's bouncing around everywhere. We have a friend, Bosco. Bosco in, in Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, right? Yeah. Bosco Burnham's. He's also a watering hole fellow. He's been in the same spot forever. Only one time did he have to move. And he had to move because the club owner kept kind of moving him around. And he was like, I can't, my name can't do this. You know what I'm saying? So this is a person who has the substance behind it. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't even follow up and have somebody else go in that room because that's how much he thought of his name and how much he put behind the substance that he put behind what he does. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have to really just watch what it is that we're doing and how we're doing it. My coffee company, it doesn't make a lot of money right now. And I need money to, 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 to build a trailer and all of this stuff. I want to do all of these things with my coffee company and whatever. But I, right, you know, but I had to also realize that the creator just wanted me to kind of calm down and finish doing my, my little coffee cart. Yeah. Work so that. This week, this week is the first time I'll have running water on my coffee cart. But guess what? Three weeks ago, right? I was yeah. like, I'm getting a trailer. <laughs> what? You don't have a sink. Yeah. Yeah. Tank? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you're ahead. Um, just because you want to have a trailer yeah. doesn't mean it has substance behind it. Yeah. Can you run water on this mm. trailer you're going to get? <laughs> well, no, I can't, but I want a trailer. It's going to be yeah. cute. I got I want to put the sign you on it. designs for it already. Yeah, I got designs for it. Now, I, I have something that I, I really <laughs> want to ask you because yeah. one of the things I really appreciate about you is that you're very articulate in your feelings and emotions mm. and you're very descriptive. Mm-hmm. So I want you to describe Just, oh. as best as you can that feeling because you were talking about it with those two poems that you had they, that are your two favorites. Describe that feeling that you get, because unless you're a creative, it's very hard to describe. If there was someone who could, you would be the person. Describe, <laughs> describe the feeling that you get when the universe has opened up for you and you are able to just create something that doesn't even feel like it's you making. Oh, oh really? That's what we're doing? That's what we're doing. <laughs> great, great question. Great question. That's a good one. The feeling is like, it's almost, and I hate, I wish you knew how much I hate the word surreal. I hate that word. I hate that word. It's it. stupid and people keep using it. It's <laughs> overused. It's overused. Surreal is, is, has become a thing. And I don't like yeah. it. I don't like it at all. Because it's overused. Poor yeah. word. It didn't do nothing to me. Didn't do <laughs> that that word didn't do nothing to me. She about to whoop that <laughs> behind. Whoop that um, it's <laughs> all, you, you definitely are witnessing outside of yourself. Yeah. You're witnessing outside of yourself. If you literally just follow what it is, I have a serious, I have this ebook that I'm finishing now and it's called There Is No Window. And it's about just not, you know, they ain't, you ain't jumping out of nothing. It really wasn't nothing in the first place. It really is your mind. It really mm. is your mind that you're, that you're jumping out of. You're jumping outside of your mind to do the thing that, that it keeps on. And it's like things just keep on going and going and going. I'll give you an example. I was supposed to meet with Kevin a couple of times about writing a grant for you guys, right? Mm-hmm. And I... Things would just kept happening to me boom. on that day boom. at that time. Boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. This morning, my 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 daughter, my granddaughter's teacher decided last night that there's a field day at the school today. Last night she decided. Hey, you did it last night. She decided to wow. tell the parents last night. Y'all, this there's gonna day. be vendors at the field day tomorrow. Vendors. And my daughter's reading it. And she goes, "I got this last night." And I opened my eyes this morning. I'm like, "Well, now I gotta move my Apple Cash over to my Cash App." Got to go down to the store and get something and run my cash out card. Just get cash out for my granddaughter. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, meanwhile, let me make you laugh. My daughter had the money for the daggone field trip. I just thought when she said it, I just that, that I should be coming yeah. here. Right. Yeah. Half the stuff I ain't had to do. Oh. But but it's like people that just, it, it's just things that just keep coming in front of you, coming in front of you. Yeah. Right? I could have easily said to Kev, yo, it's, today is stupid and I can't come. Yeah. What it is, is I have to just go, I have to get out of the house today because I'm going to this thing. Yeah. Right? The conversation that this man and I had today, I would have never had it had I not shown up. You literally have to follow every little tiny step, the little tiny things that are happening, because those are the things that are going to lead to the big thing. Mm-hmm. And when the big thing happens, right, 
it is a it is like an out of body experience to watch it happen. You don't know how it happened, and then you can back up and see every single step that it wow. took to get there, and watch it happen. One year, I had I have this thing every year called sundress sandals and spoken word. I have it whenever I'm gonna have it. I have it however I'm gonna have it. <laughs> Do you know one year, Tavis? You know Tavis Brunson. Y'all know Tavis. He was just the most amazing thing ever in life. He's gone now. Mm-hmm. He's one of my best friends. We had it at, around his birthday. Right. I literally got a wasn't gonna do it. Couldn't get the money for it. Club was like, yo, you got my money. I was like, no, I ain't got your money. Let's just do the door together. Okay, bet. And it's just little tiny conversations. We had a private concert by Tank and the Bang. Two nights after that, she was on Jimmy Fallon for the first time. What? You just, you can't, you can't make yeah. it up. You just got to literally follow the little things. Follow the bridge. Well, I have a concert of ta- Tank singing Happy Birthday to Tavis on Two Notch Road in the bar, right by the pool hall, by the big lots. Nobody came. It was 30 people, 40, 50 people maybe. Full concert by Tank and the Banger. Two nights later, she was on Jimmy Fallon. And everybody was like, oh, Tank and the Banger. I was like, really? You could have came. You could have came. <laughs> it was right here. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, that's the kind of things that are, those are the kind of things that that if you follow the little things on the way, you'll be able to witness. And you're not witnessing yourself in the first place. Whenever I write a poem that's beautiful, whenever I perform anything that's gorgeous, I say, it's not my words, it's yours, God. It's not my words. They're not my words anyway. Mm. It's not my stuff anyway. I just get to witness it. Wow. A vessel. Yeah. yeah. Vessel. Now I understand what LeBron James was talking about. <laughs> so to just to just to segue, I have to ask you about that. No, seriously, that explained it to me. I always wonder what he meant by witness. Like witness what LeBron just that makes sense. He's just witnessing. Stuff, He's just yeah. it's just coming through him. It's yeah, not like, like everybody else. Yeah, he don't know what's going on. Man, that was dope. Um Posh, the wordsmith. So we have to ask you about this before we get to the You're end. We gotta You're we gotta hit with <laughs> So you, of course, you did start talking a little bit about Haiku Coffee 575. Would you delve a little bit more into that? Just real quickly explain your journey into discovering the best kinds of coffee in the world and what you doing and roasting your own coffee. Mm-hmm. I'm, okay. Y'all have to forgive me. It's it's going to go long a little bit, but y'all edit out whatever we'll, you want to edit right, out. We'll, we'll follow. Me and my husband were going through some stuff in 2015. 2016, he decided that he was going to move to Kentucky live with his brother and try to restart his life. And then we were going to have conversations after. But the thing about us getting separated was it was like nobody nobody would even understand it. Every time we were together, we were together. Yeah. Nobody had to talk about whether or not we were going to stay together. Just when I would come in from Maryland and he would he would be here and he stayed with my oldest daughter while I was living in Maryland. I, I can't explain that kind of love. I can only tell you it happened. You know what I'm saying? We just were together. When we were together. So when we moved to Kentucky. I took all his children to see him. We said goodbye really lovingly. He called me on Mother's Day of 2016, told me he loved me and how much of a great mother I was. And he left, and no one ever saw him again for two years. He disappeared. What we found out later was that that June, around that June, he died on an overpass in Jefferson County in Lexington, Kentucky. His body was not found until the next year. In February of 2017, they found his body on the overpass when they were going along. 35 pounds of bones and skin. I didn't wow. know if he was a black man or a white man because there's lots of them. So I'd have him cremated. So I, and, then, and then they found him and then never called me. So my father kept saying, stay married to Eric because if they find him, they have to tell you they found him mm-hmm. because you're married to him. Mm-hmm. Yes. That is not the truth. Mm-hmm. I did not find out till October. I'm a child of a cop. And my father in the summer of 2018 said, give me everything you have on looking for Eric. So I sent him everything I had. In October 5th of 2018, I found out that he had he was dead the whole time. So I had to now cremate my husband, ship his body to me, have a memorial service for him. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't really his wife. I was kind of his wife, kind of not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so I'm a widow or I'm not. You know what I mean? Ooh, so we're safe. So he has five children, three of them are mine. The other two live down the street. Because the other thing we were, where we were was we were a collective family. His older brother and sister were always with him. Uh, you know, everybody who knows me knows you can see Zoe and Caleb anytime. And their mother has six kids. So all together we do, we roll, you know, but we squad. raise the kids together. Mm-hmm. So I started my job teaching poetry at the prison and stuff. And, you know, having to write the word widow, having to check off the box widow, having to order his death certificate, things like that. Just I was crushed, but I started a new job and stuff. And one night I was going to sleep and I just thought about all the times that poets had come in my house 
And it didn't matter what time it was. It could be 10 o'clock at night. You're making a cup, pot of coffee. And he, they, people would be like, Eric, I can't have no coffee 10 o'clock at night. Next thing you know, it's 2 o'clock in the morning and we're still drinking coffee. <laughs> and we're doing ciphers. Yeah. Tess, all of them. Everybody's been to my house. Everybody we know from the poetry community has been to my house, have coffee with my husband. So I started to... So, so in 2020, in 2018, I, I locked down my platform. So Haku Coffee, Instagram, Facebook, everybody, everything was locked down. Twitter, everything was locked down. I did nothing about it for two years. I just did that. That was it. And then I finally like got to the point in 2020 where I just decided to just do it. So I started just, I had a hot plate, one of those coffee hot plates. It took a half an hour to roast a pound of coffee. Mm-hmm. So two bags every half an hour is what I had. Yeah. And I had orders out the wazoo first Christmas that we did it. Yeah. And then the next year, I did the same thing. I had to keep roasting coffee. Yeah. Because <laughs> I just, I'm a pipe type person. I, I could show you. If I if I make a banana pudding, I'm making the cookies too. Yeah. I don't want to buy Miller wafers. Yeah. I pay nobody for my stuff. How do you make it? I want to do it myself. So I decided to roast beans. So then I started learning about beans. And then I started learning that every bean that you drink, it doesn't matter where you get it from. You can get it from Brazil. You can get it from Colombia. It all comes from a city called Limu, which is right above Ethiopia. Mm-hmm. Every coffee bean mm-hmm. is birthed there. And we were traded. They were traded like us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ethiopia was birth, yep. is the birthplace of coffee. The birthplace of coffee. Mm-hmm. Most people don't so even know that. Though. Most people don't know that, right? Yeah. So as I'm learning, I'm learning and I'm like, okay, well, I will never buy beans outside of Africa because that's where they come from. Smart. And so that's why I have, even if I have a blend, I have an African blend, mm-hmm. Sumatra and Tanzania and whatever. But it's all in honor of Eric Dion Jackson because he was such an artist and such a, he was best friends with Thomas Washington. Artists, they were best friends in high school. They were best friends. They'd known each other forever. And they just created a bunch of stuff together. But, but how that's how it started. And then it just blew from there. And I'm learning how to run a business because I don't know. I'm used to, Hosting open mics. I'm used to yeah. my business being yeah. people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not used not to my product. business being product. Mm-hmm. So I'm learning. I'm growing. Shout out to Black Coffee out of Atlanta. I'm watching them. I watch people. You know, but my story comes from just being honor, just giving honor to my my late husband because he 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 kind of died on his own terms and stuff. He didn't want to be here, so was, we have to just keep on going. You know, yeah. and just raising his daughters. So they are my my company is an LLP. My daughters are my partners. Hey. I'm 51%, though. Don't play. I love how you just throw stuff in there. Like, don't play. It's for the... They're, they're don't play. Mm-hmm. Two yeah. of them don't even want this business, so oh, I can't... Right. They don't want it. Yeah. My oldest daughter yeah. knows what to do if something happened to me with this business. But, uh, but uh, yeah, that's how Haiku Coffee started. And really, and truly, Haiku, I was a little bit troubled because I wanted to have a coffee that, that meant I was Black mm-hmm. or I was a woman. But no no word was was hit me like that. My poetry name is Selah. Selah the poet. Yeah. Selah, when you see the word Selah in Psalms, it means I'm done. I'm finished. Mm-hmm. Look back at what was said. Yes. Haku is, you can't play with the words because they got to fit in this 575. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Every word has to matter. So that's why. Matters. Coffee matters. Mm-hmm. matters. What, are some, what are some misconceptions about coffee? Coffee you've... actually can help you with kidney disease, can help you from cancer. Up to five coffee cups of coffee a day will not harm your body. It actually helps with diabetes as well. Hmm. It is the things we put in coffee. That's why mm-hmm. I asked you, you have cream, you have yeah. sugar, what kind of sugar? Mm-hmm. You know, because I'll drink black coffee before I put white sugar in it. That's what and I do. If it's if there's creamer around, yep. I will have the creamer and that is my sugar and that's it. Yep. But shout out to Starbucks. I worked there for a couple of years. <laughs> She's not like everybody. I mean, I tell you know, I take I've had 50 million jobs, man. I really have. And you got porn. everything from what I do. You teaching, showing us how to write yeah. brands. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it's good to have a, a wealth of knowledge and experience in this world. Because there are a lot of people out there who, you know, if if they've only done one or two things, they don't know how to interact with people. Mm-hmm. They don't know. Ooh, preach. They don't preach. know. They don't know how to and yes. say if their world changes vastly. Yeah, They're jumping off roofs. Yeah, you know, yeah, not a building. No, we, we, the people who are able to maneuver and take chances and look for experience. No, I was about to just to do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I ain't done this before. Yeah. It's just, one of my favorite yeah. things. What else am I doing today? Let's, yeah. let's, do well, let's do this. You know, I, 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 I've also found out what I don't. I had to load a semi truck by myself. I did not like that. Oh, never that is a yeah, lot. Never yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, it never happened. Yeah. But I, you, you done know? it. Yeah. 
and go mm-hmm. install some insulation in the south in the summer. I had Appreciate somebody you. do my gutters. I had a friend of mine, do, my friend and my, my friend and his sons came and did my gutters. And I was like, you want to take pictures with me and put them online? You know me, I'm always starting mm-hmm. a business for somebody. Yeah. I'm like, you want me to take pictures with me and put them online? We should do this. Put them on a website. He was like, I will never. <laughs> Again, like, never. Please never. don't even refer. Don't no. do that. Don't do that. Don't send them no. pictures of what I did. No. I will never. I this a terrible job. <laughs> terrible. And my gutters are so pretty. And I'm like, yes. No, like, no. No. She just like, went. After you like work, I'm telling you, like, I, I did some weird like housework, side work stuff and some mm-hmm. custodial work. But like when you go under a house, uh-huh. oh! Really? After that, I'm gonna tell you like this: nothing really bothers me anymore. But I don't want to do it again. Mm-hmm. You go under the house, you're hanging out with the snakes and the rats and the bugs. You go in the attic. Oh my hey, that god! Is- That's where I was. I was in. The- I went in the attic to do insulation. I was underneath the house to seal up the house. I did all this stuff, and this was for free. Mm-mm. I was the SJW at the time, and so this was part of my my burning process. I had to, had to do this. And so after doing that stuff, I was like, all right, I understand. I, I'm going to respect when I see them immigrant workers, you give them a beer. <laughs> like, do your job, bro, because I see everybody's not going to do You mean the ones jobs. that are running from Florida? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Let's see you run now. Florida now. Yeah. Run yeah. Florida run, now, run, DeSantis. Yo, seriously, we're going to have to take them now. We're going to have to take them. It's a beautiful thing. But to wrap up today, we always like to ask people about work-life balance because it's so important yeah. to how we survive and actually experience life and enjoy what we do outside of that. So... Um, very quickly, just wrapping up, we got to ask, how do you find time to balance life, being mother, as well as running a business? Oh, being 51%. 51%. The boss. Ownership. Yeah, yeah. You the boss. I want to say that, it, it, first of all, shout out to all the mothers that work outside of the home. Yeah. Yes. You know, yes. I, I when people ask me what I do for a living, I do whatever keeps my ca- coffee business open. That's the mm. answer to that question. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I drive Uber, Lyft. I do you know, side work, I write grants, I do whatever I got to do. The yeah. summer I'll be teaching in the summer school, whatever <laughs> I got to do yes, to keep my coffee business open and keep my children good because they call me every day, all day about everything. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get a text in a minute about white. <laughs> I got a text in the middle of a meeting yesterday about white nail polish. Bring it home. I bought it already. I need some more. Oh, That's, how it is. That's how it is. We should have had her on the Mother's Day episode. Oh, so my daughters, year. man, my daughters. But they, but they expect me to be that present because that's how I've trained them to be, is that yeah. I'm that present. I just make sure that I keep them in mind. I, and I use my Google Calendar very wisely, you know, and I keep my things. I try to keep my things to where whatever they got to do, it just got to come first. It's in your they're not going to ever do this again. Yeah. You know, they're not going to ever be 17 again. You make they're sacrifices. never going to be 17 again. Mm-hmm. So if I got to drive Uber and Lyft to make sure that the prom experience is everything, you know, and then sometimes people just bless me and the blessings have come so on time, you know, so on time for me and my children. So I just thank God for my community because my community has made sure that I keep on moving. And that's all. I just make sure that they are everything for me. That's it. And, I, and I'm not, I'm no punk bitch. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Like I like that. I'm, Another I thing like to that. put on the shirt. Yeah, yeah. This is the thing I, I put on no the punk. shirt. Yeah, I need shirt. Yeah, I need Next time we see you. Can... With, with, with little quotes on it. Mona. I don't wear that everywhere. If you do that, I'm like, you like them. Go yeah, buy I'm some of her work. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be willing to not be popular. Oh, all right. And of course, we, we gotta let you do some shameless plugs. Yeah, um, yeah. What Plug current projects are you working on and what can we expect from Haiku Coffee and other endeavors in the future? And don't forget to drop your... <laughs> yes. oh, yes. She's she gonna be with plug. us, y'all. She with us. Plug. She a part of the team. Shameless plug. She a part of the team. So go ahead. And then you can also drop your social media. <sighs> yes, thank you. I am working with the fearless team of Create. I absolutely am <laughs> loving working with Create. <laughs> they gave me, y'all don't, y'all don't even know. And real quick, I have to say this. Y'all do not know how, what I was going through. I was going through, I had a really bad time with my last partnership and did not want to ever partner with anybody ever again. There was something about Kevin's tenacity and the way that he works that made me want to work with him. And then to meet all of you guys and what y'all, and to see what y'all do and how y'all work together and what kind of team y'all make. Like, I'm honored to even be asked to be a part of this team in any way, shape, or form. So, shout out to Create for bringing me back out of my house. I wasn't yes. out of my house before, and I was like, I ain't fooling with nobody. <laughs> Haiku Coffees, still every Saturday at Soda City. I'm always in front yes. of Sweet Cream, 1626 Main Street is where I'm always standing on Saturdays. Haiku Coffee 575.com, Haiku Coffee 575 Instagram, Sayla the Creator on TikTok, and Sayla the Poet on uh, Instagram. Just get at me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm you know, easy to find. You know why? Because you ain't no punk bitch. Yeah. <laughs> punk bitch. I know punk bitch. <laughs> well, we appreciate you being with us here mm-hmm. on Thank you. Pop Love Podcast. Thank you. 
we appreciate our guest host, uh, friend, yeah. and family member, Alfreda. Come on, man. Come and visit us. From, ja, from you want to plug? Yeah, yeah plug, plug. plug. Drop a plug. No, no plugs. No plugs. It's all about the lady here. You plug and I have to say this one thing before <laughs> I stop. You know, I've always known, I've only known a no. Of you by your poet name, yeah. and I just started yeah, putting two and two. Yeah, uh, uh, and that's how I don't. I when I when when he first said, yeah, you got to meet Monifa, you got to meet Monifa, and they were talking, yeah, yeah, she the poet. I, I had to put two and two together. I was like, that's the same person. So you <laughs> you <laughs> and then two different people in my mind. You were two different <laughs> people <laughs> came together. Just yeah. now. I was looking at this. I was like, yeah, that that is the oh, same person. It's one human. Okay, excellent. So that makes my darn day. Um, don't judge when you mix it. When you mix it, don't. <laughs> but. Signing off for the Hilltop Glove Podcast. I'm DJ and what? Tamaya over here. Yes. Skip. Yep. Mike. Oh, <laughs> quite Mike. Of course, y'all free. We have this wifey cat over here in the in the hidden in the doorway area. And then of course our esteemed guest and colleague. We Thank appreciate you. you today. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Excellent. Beautiful. Everybody have a blessed one. Tell everybody around that you love them. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. 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 That's it for today's episode of the Hilltop Glove Podcast. Make sure to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and other platforms. Also follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Hilltop Glove.